Welcome back to episode 3 of Rotary Craft. And where did we leave the game? Well, we left it, and I've cleaned things up a little bit, a bit more room. We left it with, um, well, steam engine and farming upstairs. Now that we've got to steam, I've put in another steam engine. And although I think I put a lever upstairs next to the one upstairs, they don't actually respond to levers, so ignore that. Uh, they just start working when they hit a th uh, 100 degrees Celsius. Um, bear in mind, you don't actually need just one block of lava underneath. The one block of lava and flowing either way will be enough to heat them up, as you see here. And you can also see this friction heater that I put in the first episode and forgot you needed uh, much higher levels of stuff. So, yeah, I know, I didn't uh, audible these. Don't blame me. Um, well, do blame me, but you know what I mean. This is the regular furnace, and you'll see how fast that goes. Normal kind of rate. We can now connect this, this friction heater. A steam engine will do the job. So let's do that. Uh, where are you? Uh, one of the stone shafts. And if I right click on here, before I do this, note that uh, I did turn the volume down of the engines. I did. Now, I know. Right? <laughs> this is a little much. But it's going to heat up and it's going to get to 540 degrees or so. Bear in mind, you can drive this faster with gearboxes. I don't need to right now. And in fact, I'm just going to knock that out of the way. Yeah. Um, the reason why is I want to upgrade this block a little bit. Um, let's have a look how we do that. The block I'm looking for is called a clutch. And just like the clutch in a car, it disengages an engine from the um, whatever you're powering. So in this case, it's the actual friction heater. It is a mount, just a very, very simple recipe there with a the base panel and four HSLA, shaft unit and redstone. And I've already done that just to shorten that up. Uh, I don't want too much crafting uh, of fairly elementary recipes. So if you put that in the same place, you get this kind of effect. And there's the magic clutch in the middle. Not much is really happening there, um, because we need to give it a redstone signal. And this is where the redstone thing comes in, because now we can turn it on, and we get the really annoying noise. However, the important point here is look how fast that is going, and that is only the start. Uh, you can, of course, drive this faster with gearboxes, and if you do, that temperature is going to go up. If it gets, I think it's over a thousand degrees, it'll blow up, uh, or blow up the furnace. I forget which one it actually is. I've never really gone over that, so yes, uh, enough said about that. So what I'm probably going to do is rig up something. I'm not sure what I have for redstone control in this uh, pack, so um, it could just end up being native, uh, sorry, vanilla. No, oh, we have under I.O., so I could use your redstone conduit. Um, and that is redstone alloy, which is... Redstone alloy. Do, uh, hmm. <laughs> I could take a while. I may well just go for vanilla, given that this is a rotary craft tutorial. Uh, normally, I'd look for red alloy wire. I wonder if I have any of that red alloy. Ah, yes, that does exist. And that is a relatively simple recipe. So what you could do is run that along the top of the uh, the clutches or along the side here in fact uh let's just actually put some cobblestone in yeah that should do and do i have any iron left i don't think i do yeah i'll make some and show you next episode anyway it's very simple if you've not used it before you can lay it out like redstone except you can do it along surfaces like the roof and the walls and all kinds of other stuff and then just put it near a lever and you can switch all of these on at once so that is a very very good improvement to the furnaces and i now no longer need to keep burning wood which is a really good advantage now if only i could find coal seams in this um <laughs> this world gen um a very weird world gen indeed uh, but that's fine so yeah just put that in mind that's how we get op optional things working we just put a clutch in the way so once we've got that running and, and by the way if you're wondering where all the piping's gone it's now running underneath these um some machines that have to have lava underneath or all kinds of the wiring underneath you can't do that with but you can in this case these are both on permanently and they are 
getting ones making yeast, the ones making sludge, and since I have more sludge here, what I'm going to do is take you out for a second, put the sludge in, and, oh god, flip this on. Alright, and retreat. <laughs> okay. So while I talk, I'll retreat down here, and yes, there's, uh, there's XP coming out of that furnace, I think. Yeah. Uh, and it's making ethanol crystals. Now, that important part for ethanol crystals, and that, that's our next step, is to go up one level from the um, steam engine to the gasoline engine. And our gasoline engine uses ethanol, but the thing we're trying to make, first of all, is called the grinder. Uh, so let's make this. We need a saw, so I'm going to need three HSLA steel gears, three, three base panels, and lots of HSLA otherwise. And do I have any? I have one, but let's just grab a few of these th things. Oh, that's irritating me too much. I'm going to turn that off and see if there's a config option for the friction heater volume. If not, I'll just end up having to turn things off just so I'll annoy you guys. So, where was I? Ah, yes. So, three of these. And two of them I'm going to need to make into a saw. like this, then I want one here, and I'm going to run out of base panels, aren't I? Nearly, okay, so let's get a few more of those, three base panels, two there, one in the middle, and two either side, and we've got our grinder. Whole shift for power information. Minimum power is four kilowatts, minimum torque is 128 problem with the steam engine is the torque. Now, we could go into gearboxes. Steam engine. It only outputs 32 new meters of torque, so it's four times the amount. So what I could do is put a 4 to 1 gearbox in, um, and that would work. That's something I'm going to do, maybe, but the first thing is I want to make sure we have lubricant, which is what the gear, the grinder makes. In fact, let's just put it down somewhere. Um, I'm going to put it out here somewhere, just temporarily, so you can see it before we get to the episodes. I can't actually mine that yet, so I'm going to put it here. And, yeah, I'm going to need to power behind it, which means I'm going to need to make the gasoline engine. Uh, and I'm also going to need to make some lubricant hose. So let's start with a lubricant hose. That's easy enough to make, I think. It's just wood and glass. Yeah, so let's grab some wood and some glass. Do I have any down here? Just enough for some. That'll do. 16 of you. And it's a special type just for lubricant, just as this is for liquids. Just so they don't mix when you get near each other. This is Rotary Craft's solution to that particular problem. So, lubricant hose. So now we need the gasoline engine itself. And this gets a bit more complicated. Gasoline engine. So this one outputs 128 newton meters of torque. Lots more power than we actually need, but that's fine. And speed is 512 radians per second. So... What do we need? We need pistons, so let's just make those. I am going to get two of them, so that's fine. That's all I need. I'm going to need a shaft unit, which I've got one. I've got two. Two base units, so I'm going to need an extra set. Um, okay, these are just... Okay. Let's get four of them. And another set of these. Um, do I want two of these? No, just the one. So I'll grab this back. Sorry, I had to cough there. Um, we need the last part, which is the ignition unit, which is fairly straightforward. Um, let's just grab that. Ignition units. I definitely don't want that many of them. <laughs> Let's just throw those back. And I think that's it. I need an impeller. Which I should have. And then is the last one. 
Gasoline engine. So, gasoline engine. Uh, I can't get this the right way around. No, I didn't. Of course I didn't. Uh, fine. Are you this way? Yes, you are. Okay. So, info. Gasoline engine runs on ethanol. Load in ethanol crystals and watch them burn. Okay, but before we do that, I want to get one other piece of thing. Piece of thing? Yeah, that, that's incredibly descriptive, I know. Uh, I thought I had a hopper somewhere. Ah, yes I do. And ideally a chest, if we've got any of those left. Uh, well, I've got plenty of wood, so I guess that'll do. Um, where did you go? Yeah, let's just make a few chests. Okay, so this is just going to be to load this up manually. There'll be other ways later. Want, you know, if I get an ender chest, I can connect the farms up there to here just by dumping in the seeds. So if we then put uh, one of these on top, and then a chest on top of that. There we go. Uh, that should be sorted, and then, yeah, this is going to going to power up. So then we're going to need to output the lubricant somewhere. And this is why you want some kind of tank. Now, I'm not sure what I've got in this pack. I've got portable tanks, that, that much is for certain. Um, yeah. The recipe of this has been changed. <laughs> Yeah, I may well cheat those in, um, just because you won't have this. You may not have this pack, and you may have the standard recipes. These are not the standard recipes. They're certainly not for an open blocks tank. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pulse jet furnace. We're not there yet. So you're going to need some way of storing these, and the, the method's up to you. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to let you choose entirely. You can even have portable tanks. Um, doesn't matter too much. You know, it doesn't use up that much lubricant, but let's start off by... Uh, I'm just going to put some lubricant hose down. I'm not going to need to get this to anything. So, um, probably I'll actually connect that underneath if that um, lets me do that. Oh, of course it won't. Well, I tried. What I'd probably do then in this kind of situation is connect this to the end like that. And I'd figure the rest out. Uh, let's just put you back down. So, we should be ready to start things up. Um, I cut off the clutch, so... We've only got 18, but that, that should be more than enough to start this. So there it goes, it's going to fill into its internal buffer, and we've got 18 minutes uh, to go. And I'm hoping this one does respond to a lever. We'll see shortly. I think it does. Uh, should be no reason why it shouldn't, but uh, yeah, unlike a steam engine. We'll see. And you don't. Yeah, and now I'm remembering there's an actual control block for this that you put underneath it. I'm not going to go there just yet, so yeah, I'm just going to keep things simple for this episode. And let's put some canola seeds in and let's see if we get some lubricant, shall we? And you should start getting passed through, which is going into the grinder, which should process and we should get lubricant. Now there's an internal tank, you can use a bucket on and you can ladle that into gearboxes wherever you need it. However, the hose is kind of a more long-term thing, so, you know, for your use, there it is. It's filling it with lubricant now. So you then just pipe it off to wherever you need it. In our case, probably gearboxes. As I've said before, I could put a gearbox in between here instead of a clutch, or move this one back, and then have a, a gearbox and then a clutch, and then when I turn this on, everything's going to speed up a lot more. That allows to be a lot more, well, not efficient, but... It'll be a lot faster um, for the same amount of noise, so you can have the noise for a lot less time. So this is a good setup, at least to start with. And we're going to get to the control blocks for this later. Um, it, you can go underneath with that red alloy wire again, and then you can turn them off and on and stuff like that. 
So we got that going, and um, where should we really head to next? Yeah, there's a quite, a f well, quite a lot to actually go in the mod, but a lot of it is based around one particular uh, block, and that is in production. And uh, where are we? It's called the extractor. I still don't think we have enough for it just yet. Let me just look it up in any eye instead. It's faster. Here's the extractor. Bit of a weird recipe. You've got to have nether racks, so you've got to have gone to the nether. Uh, again, because this is a tutorial, I might just, you know, cheat that one in. Uh, I don't need to show all the nether stuff in a, in a specific tutorial. Um, a drill, which is just HSLA, all of this other stuff you've seen before. Wouldn't be anything wrong there. However, Yes, this is the problem. It needs 8,000 um, radians per second <laughs> with a minimum power of 65 kilowatts. Now, for reference, if we look at our gasoline engine, that has the correct amount of power. The torque, we, don't, we have four times too little. And the speed, we have... Yeah. 16 times too small so we're not i don't think unless we combine lots and lots of gasoline engines we're not going to get what this is saying is the minimum so we still have to get a little bit further that's something we're going to have to get to as we as we carry on with the mod um you used to be able to do that if i remember rightly you used to be able to i think with gasoline engines but this this power has been changed or at least it may be changed in this pack checking your pack anyway if the gasoline engine is way underpowered for it that's actually been a deliberate change you need the higher tiers of things which uh, is jet fuel and we're not at jet fuel yet but bear this in mind, you can now, now that you've got ethanol, go through and technically we can get, we can use it to get these to run a lot faster, which will in turn make more ethanol a lot faster, and we go around in circles. Um, but you will need a sh uh, farm to get the sugar, and you'll need some way of generating dirt. That's something I've not got into too much yet. If we have a look at our farm up here, it's, I hope it's not night time, let's see. No, we're fine. If we have a look over here, it's been going for some time now. As you can see, we've got lots of canola seeds, so we can take some of these back. And if we look at this, you'll see the effect here. We've got one fan in the center, and it's affecting three rows, but we want more than that. We want more, more, more. So if you have a look back here, did I actually put a lever in place for this thing? Maybe it was just for the DC electric engine and I'm forgetting. Yeah, it was. Okay, fair enough. So I have a stone shaft here and I did that on purpose so that we can then think about gears. Now, um, yeah, let's have a look. What does the fan actually need? I've got a feeling it just needs a certain amount of power and nothing else. Yeah, so a kilowatt. And steam engine. Uh, where are you? steam engine that's way more power however um, I think it's the speed we actually want to update on this one so we're gonna make a gearbox and we're gonna see if we can drive this faster I'm gonna knock this stone shaft out once we actually get the gearbox going if I can get back over the wall let's make a gearbox and let's start with something relatively sedate he says uh, with um, maybe a four to one. Uh, that sounds reasonable. And let's just put all this in here. It should just fill up this buffer and this will get to a certain amount and then stop. In fact, it has, you know, so it, this should this should stop and be fine. All the seed husks. Hmm. Anyway, um, let's go to the gearboxes. You can make gearboxes out of a range of different materials, and the different materials allow you to handle different amounts of torque, just like the stone shafts. The stone one is relatively straightforward to do, so why don't we do that one? Yeah, and it requires smooth stone. Okay, let's just get a couple of those sorted. 
Uh, stone four to one. And the stone rod. Okay, we'll see if I... As long as I don't run out of smooth stone. We should be alright. And then... Stone two to one. And another stone rod at two. Four gear units. And we're we'll going to require some stone slabs. Fine. And I think we also need a screwdriver. I'm not sure if I made this yet, but it's for turning the, the things around. And I never get the actual the things right, so <laughs> getting the, uh, the ability to turn them around is very useful. Um, and that should be a simple recipe. Something like this. Yep, screwdriver. Alright, and we also want a bucket of lubricant, I think. Um... This is something you're going to probably want on a portable tank on that gearbox. And just keep an eye on it, because if you do... Well, the worst thing going to happen is your gearbox is going to break. It's made of smooth stone. Well, who cares? Um, higher on, though, you're going to have it made of steel and diamond. So, you know, just be a little bit careful there. Now, what I was hoping for here was to demonstrate to speed this fan up, and we can certainly do that. Now, unfortunately, it won't have any effect on the crops. I was kind of hoping for that, but uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. We actually need more power for that, so I need to replace this with a gasoline engine, which needs more ethanol than I have at the moment. But this will do to demonstrate the gearbox. So if I put the gearbox in place, you see nothing's happening. That's just because it's the wrong way around. So if I right-click a few times, we're going to start the right way around. Hello, zombie. Go away. So, it is now working. However, you do want this tool. Now, all this tool is is the angular transducer. Very simple recipe. Three HSLA along the bottom, three wood and one redstone. If you right-click a block, it's going to give you information about it. In this case, this is outputting 16 kilowatts at 128 rads per second, but this engine outputs 512 rads per second, so we're actually slowing things down here. If I shift right-click with this, I'll switch modes. You see everything's running a lot faster. And now with the angular transducer, it's running at 2 kilowatts per second. But what we've actually done is sacrifice torque for that. So this, this, the torque will have gone down uh, because of that. And we get lots of information here about this kind of thing. Fuel remaining doesn't matter in the matter of the steam engine because it's just infinite lava underneath. So, and you'll also see that it's got a certain amount of lubricant in the gearbox. And if we want more lubricant, uh, that you just right click on the gearbox to add more and it will fill uh, the gearbox, um, yeah, lubricant gauge there. If you also look in here, it'll tell you the amount of power that's being used. So, yeah, all well and good. This fan is still actually operating just, just one, well, three really, but it's not really pushing all of them outwards. To do that, we need something with higher power. Or we can command multiple of these into one fan. What I normally end up doing, though, because this is free, I end up just with having... Um, multiple fans <laughs> that kind of works with the steam engines behind because I don't really need this uh, gearbox I will keep it for other uses because there will be need for it in other ways uh, let's put this back and then flips around uh, so we can just use stone shafts with a few engines and some cooling fins so I may well do that the alternative is really to upgrade this engine and that's something that's worthwhile doing at some point but I don't have an automated um, ethanol production yet and the main problem stopping that is that I need some way of generating dirt, some way of generating sugarcane that isn't this. I do not want to be running around with sugarcane. That's nothing something really to do with um, Rotorcraft itself. It's more of a general issue, but um, yeah, we don't have to worry too much. So, we've got gearboxes just demonstrated, and you can use those to upgrade and downgrade things. And oh my, I forgot I left this thing on. But we do have a fairly large, or should have some, yeah, ethanol crystals. So, you know, ethanol is useful for fuel in general, but now I can just get as much lubricant as I need. So we've got lubricant, we've got ethanol, we've got gasoline engines, what's next? Next I'm going to introduce a, a way to bypass the problems of all these engines. We've 
we can't really do this with farms, or I don't really want to do this with farms, and you'll realise why um, soon. Remember when I said that we can use a gasoline engine, but it's much, much um, too low power to actually deal with the extractor? Well, there is one exception to that. If we're willing to wait and have this keep on working, and then store the energy somehow, and obviously I did mention right at the start in, um, in Rotary Craft that you're not really meant to store energy too much really you're meant to use at the machine straight away but if we're willing to store the energy and then we release it in a burst we can probably build an extractor now the extractor bit's going to come in the next episode and hopefully you'll join me for that one but in this episode i'm just going to show the example of storing that power we need to make something called an industrial coil um let's just get some of this out of the way um i'm just wondering if i have enough hsla we'll soon see We've got some ball bearings, um, brake disc. I'm probably going to be running out here. Yeah, let's just make a few of these and a few of these as well. I'm probably going to need them to be honest. Um, brake disc, shaft bearing, so let's make that. And again, a couple of those. Um, so the brake disc is enough for that, which I have. I'm going to need the tension core, which is a lot of these. So I'm going to need eight of those. Oh, they don't stack. Really? Really, they don't stack. Okay, <laughs> that's just making things just really annoying for being annoying's sake. Uh, I want the, yeah, I want one of those built in. Okay, let me just get a few more of these. One, two, luckily you don't have to do this more than once, really, for whatever you're going to use. Uh, there we go. And let's just get this back and make a... Shaft units, tension coil, that's the second thing. The third thing is just the shaft core, and that should be straightforward, since I've just made two of these. And the last thing is the mount, which is the base panel, and I've already got one of the base panels, well, two of the base panels. So the mount, the brake disc, tension coil, and the shaft makes the industrial coil. Now, if you look at the maximum energy, 720 megajoules, that's a lot of energy. The important point of all of this, however, is that if you go over this, um, it explodes. Yep, so I, the reason why I don't want it on the farm <laughs> is that um, I'm not going to be looking at it. And in the farmer's case, not looking at it is probably a bad idea. However, this thing can only store energy or it can release energy. It can't do both at the same time because, you, you, you know, it has to be switched. So if we just get a couple of ethanol um, crystals. Have I got any in my inventory? I do. Okay, let's just fill this. Just put one in there. Um, am I actually going to be able to get information? There we go. Stored energy. You see it's building the energy up. And it'll continue to do that for as long as the supply. In this case, 41 seconds. And don't worry, is that's going to get nowhere near <laughs> uh, the actual maximum. Uh, 720 megajoules is the maximum, so this would have to be going for quite a while. So what we can do is we can build that up, and then we can release it, uh, you know, in whatever ways we want to. So the next episode, we're going to come into using that. And what we need to do with it is we need to have a bevel gear here. And the bevel gear you haven't seen yet, but it basically takes power in this way and um, moves it up. It's just like a right angle gear, if you like. On top of that, we'll have a, an extractor here. And we'll see what we need to do for that one, including any gearboxes or otherwise that we need, or whether we can just run this straight off. And we just release this, and it will then just obviously send the the power out. And this is going to keep on storing power until I connect it up to something. So we're going to cover that next episode, and that will get us to 
Well, it should stop make me stop having to use that smeltery upstairs. We should be able to use the extractor to uh, to do that if we can get enough power out of this thing. We'll find out whether we can next episode. Hopefully, you join me then. And thanks for watching.